So here are the equations for the first element, and here are the equations for the second element. Let's first add in these first two equations corresponding to element 1 into our K matrix. So first we're going to get KE11, 1, 1, 1, and KE121, 1, 1, and those are multiplied by EZ1 and EZ2. Then for the second equation here, we have KE211 and KE221. So this one's multiplied by EZ1 and this one's multiplied by EZ2. Then as we move on to element 2, let's add in this third equation. And in this case, we have something multiplied by EZ2. So it needs to go in the second column. And it's going to go in the second row because it's corresponding to node 2. So we're, let's put in KE11 for element 2. These are going to be added together. And here is then KE122, the other th three terms in the KE matrix for element 2. So now we've put in both of these second equations corresponding to element 2. And the second row here corresponds to the equation that we got when we, after we added these two equations together. Remember we add these two terms together, they were both multiplied by EZ2. Now this third column here is going to be multiplied by EZ3, so I should make sure to add that. And this keeps going down to EZ and N. So we could keep going on and keep adding more KE terms for the other elements. So for example, if we were to keep adding in for the third element now, we would have plus K113 added on there. Here we would have another KE123, KE213, and KE22. Three. And so this would keep going on and on and on until we get to the last element of the grid. In the end, what we'll get is a global K matrix with zeros everywhere in the K matrix except along the three diagonals. And along the center diagonal, so this middle one here, we're going to have two terms added together, except at the very first one, you can see here we didn't have two equations to add together here. So here we're going to have just one KE111, and at the very last one, we're also not going to have two equations to add together because there's just one element with one node at the end. And so here we will have KE22 for element NN. Let's program the global K coefficient matrix into our MATLAB code. Having the K matrix will allow us to solve for the EZ fields at all the nodes in the grid using EZ is equal to K backslash B. We'll be solving for the B array in just a moment. So right now we're trying to fill in K. First, let's set the size of the K matrix. Remember the KE matrix was a two by two matrix and we defined it last time, and more specifically at the beginning of this lecture. Now for the entire grid, the K matrix is a square matrix of size NN by NM. So we can abbreviate that in MATLAB using K is equal to zeros NN. We've specified that there are NE total elements across the domain of interest, so to account for each element, we'll need to incorporate this KE matrix into the K matrix NE times. Let's make the computer do the hard work of creating the K matrix for us. To have the computer assemble the K matrix for us, we will probably need to add in some for loops into the code. 
So here, use a for loop. We're going to use a for loop to do this, or at least one, maybe more. See if you can write some code or at least come up with a plan for how you would incorporate the KE matrix into the K matrix n e times.